Well, it's good to see you all. Are you ready to talk about taking charge and indicators? Uh, been a very important topic for us for every year we've been in office. Uh, when I came to the mayor's office six years ago, the most serious challenge the city faced was developing a consensus to move forward. The annual budget deficit, for example, <clears throat> was a visible symbol of the divide between citizens and city hall and special interests many times dominated the discussion at the expense of the people's interest. City government's priorities too often weren't the people's priorities. The Taking Charge Initiative was an important step to bridging that divide. We set goals, we developed performance standards, and we prioritized programs so that citizens would have a clear sense of what we intended to accomplish and how we hope to get there. Most importantly, the process gave voice to thousands of Lincoln citizens who wanted a simple goal, a government that understood and responded to their needs. Our past public engagement efforts uh, have given us citizen input that sometimes complements and sometimes conflicts with the views expressed by the interest groups who attend the council's public hearings. Regardless of the similarities or differences of people's views, they deserve our attention. And taking charge helps us secure multiple points of view on important decisions about our community's future. We begin this year's public engagement process with a survey that focuses on strategic planning. We need to hear from you about our goals for the services we provide and how you, the public, would prioritize those goals. Are we doing enough to ensure a fast emergency response? Should road building be a higher priority? Are neighborhoods receiving the support they need? These are the kinds of questions that will help your mayor and the city council move Lincoln in the right direction. The primary task of the survey is for you to tell us the relative importance of the eight outcomes the city hopes to achieve, and then tell us if the budget percentage spent on each outcome meets your expectations. For example, is 54% of the budget going to safety and security enough? Are you concerned that less than 1% of the budget is dedicated to environmental quality? Answering these questions helps us ensure that City Hall's priorities reflect the community's priorities. The survey's second part asks you to evaluate our success in achieving the goals within each outcome area. Are we doing enough to keep the crime rate low? Is support of vulnerable populations important to you? Are youth programs doing what they should do to give our kids positive activities? If you're concerned about the amount of the budget that goes to the environmental quality outcome, you may wish to go to this section and give feedback on which environmental goals matter most to you. A third part of the survey is not related to strategic planning or to the budget, but does give both the city and the University of Nebraska Public Policy Center valuable feedback on a variety of city-related topics, including overall city performance and the city's energy programs. The survey hopefully provides the information you need to effectively evaluate the questions you are asked. The city's performance indicators measure the city's success in meeting our community goals. We use indicators to help evaluate programs effectiveness and to prioritize the budget. Survey takers will have access to the same performance information that we use 
to make decisions. Performance indicators help us establish standards so that we can make intelligent adjustments. It's a little bit like what Husker coaches do at halftime of the football game. They look at the statistics and determine what they will do differently in the second half. They might see that the Big Reds offense has rushed for 150 yards, demonstrating that the run game is working. But they may also see that the defense has given up 200 yards passing. The city's performance indicators serve the same purpose. Just as our Husker coaches may change strategy and put in another defensive back to help combat the opponent's passing game, the city might change a service or modify or adjust a program to address a deficiency uncovered by our performance indicators. Goal setting, performance indicators, and public input help take the politics out of government decision making. They force us to look at what needs to be done rather than what is most popular politically. They help us sort out tough choices when budgets are tight. For example, you can always use new police officers. Our police department does a fantastic job and having more officers allows the city to offer other services that citizens appreciate. But is that more important priority, a more important priority for spending than relocating our fire stations? The performance indicators give us some guidance. As you can see from this slide, Lincoln's violent crime rate is 30% below the average for cities our size. The next slide then demonstrates that the burglary rate is also 30% below average. Did, did we get there? Yeah, we're there, okay, there we go. <laughs> so you see these two slides indicating that we're doing exceedingly well. We're exceeding our goals with respect to the police force. By contrast, the final slide shows how in 2012, our medical emergency and fire response uh, hit our goal of five minutes only 77% of the time, under a 90% standard. The indicator tells us that we do not have stations located in optimal positions for fast response. Relocating fire stations and adding police officers are both important and worthy goals. Performance indicators help us determine how to divide limited resources between those worthy goals. In this case, for example, they demonstrate fire station relocation may be the most positive impact on public safety. We have updated and changed the approximately 130 indicators we now use to judge city performance on everything from our neighborhood quality of life to preventing flood hazards to how well we do with public funds, how well we manage public funds. The revised indicators reveal a great deal of information about the city. They take an unflinching look at what is going on and what needs improvement. I urge citizens to review and to become familiar with the standards because they are the standards that help determine our plans for the city's future. We know the indicators themselves need more work, but with your help, they do indeed get better and better each year. The survey asks you to examine facts, weigh them against your priorities for city service, and tell us if our service level should increase or decrease or remain the same. 
The results are an important factor in establishing our community's strategic direction. The rankings of our outcomes and goals are the first step to converting a strategic plan into an actual budget plan so that we can meet the goals we set. Programs in higher ranked outcomes and goals will receive funding first so your changes can make a big impact on the 2014-2016 biannual budget. I ask respondents to understand that we are asking much more complicated questions than in past surveys. As a result, it is a bit more time intensive than past taking charge surveys. We have tried to respect your time by allowing respondents to make choices on what portions of the survey interest them the most. You can complete the primary portion of the survey in as little as 10 minutes. We hope you choose to do more, but be prepared to take a little more time. As in the past, we will follow up the survey with a community conversation that allows citizens to interact with one another and to interact with city staff and officials on the issues included in the survey. These conversations help us better understand our citizens' choices by providing greater depth and insight to the survey questions. If you're interested in participating in the community conversation, you can let us know by filling out a contact form linked to the survey or by contacting directly the mayor's office. Successful businesses and organizations set standards and goals because they drive employee behavior and boost performance. The 2013 Taking Charge survey is about setting those standards and goals so citizens can drive City Hall's policy and boost our performance. I urge you to be part of the solution and to make your voice heard by taking the sur survey this year. So at this point, uh, I would now like to ask Alan Tompkins and Lisa uh, Petlitzilli did I pronounce that right? I always ask you that. In the next year, I'm asking you again. And you always get it right. All right. Of the university's Public Policy Center to uh, speak a little more about the survey and to give us a demonstration. The Policy Center, as I think some of you know, has been our partner on this project for the past several years, and they've done a terrific job in, in helping us uh, learn about how to do these things. So uh, with that, Alan or Lisa? Did you want to talk about the context? You, you go ahead and start, I think. What we'll do maybe is just start by going through the actual survey, then we can talk about context if you're interested, other things. But I think most people are just interested in the nitty gritty. OK. So the core part of the survey really has two primary questions after a, a page of simple demographics. The first one is just a rank ordering of the eight outcome areas of the city. So if, um, if for, for me, safety and security was the top one, you can see it's already on top. Maybe, maybe I'd like the identity Lincoln to be a little higher in the range. You'll see that once you make your choices, once it's recording your choices, some green um, numbers are recorded onto the right. And if you don't record your choices, the next page will actually tell you, hey, you didn't record your choices. So that looks close enough to me, Rick. <laughs> you okay, can... that. Yeah. And this comes up randomly. So any resident who takes it will have a different order presented to them. Uh, to begin with. To begin with. Right, so to encourage people to not just accept the status quo. Um, I don't really want to explain anything, Rick. You don't want to say fire the chief of staff. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
So then the, the second main question is, uh, you're represented with the same eight outcome areas. If you want to remind yourself what any of those outcome areas were comprised of, which was told to you on the last page, you can click on it again just for a reminder. It also tells you how much of the current city budget is devoted to each area. So you'll see that um, safety and security is a bit over 54%. And as the mayor mentioned, I think its environmental quality is actually well under 1%. If you think the city should be spending the same, you can just click on one of those things and leave it at zero. That basically says, I think you're doing, you're, you shouldn't spend more, you shouldn't spend less on this area. But if, for example, environmental quality, I think 0.2% is way too low, I could drag that all the way to the right and say, I actually would like you at least to double that. We don't actually let people do more than double any area, but you can uh, always write in the open-ended text box that really you meant to times it by five or, or whatever. Um, for on the, on the page following this, you're going to get some feedback as to what your overall slider choices would imply for an overall budget impact in terms of would it raise the budget, would it lower the budget. So for example, since I increased uh, environmental quality, since I really don't want to raise the budget overall, I might choose to decrease something else. Um, you do have to click on each clicker to get it to compute that for you. We need to know that you really mean it to be left at zero or you really mean for it to be dragged up or down. But once you do that, when you go to the next page, it'll tell you what the overall budget change is. And Rick did an excellent job. He kept it almost to zero. But I think he didn't do it quite good enough because I don't really want the city to lower the budget. I really want to keep it at zero. So I'm going to choose to go back and change my answers because I want to get it up that 1% to get it exactly to zero because I like I like how I things to, are. I have to up 1% on something? Okay, yeah, there, we go. there you go. Try that. Oh, you get your goal. Ah, you did it. Awesome. If you hadn't, if he had not quite gotten it to zero, you could keep going back over and over again and keep playing with the sliders as much as you want. Once you click continue that you're ready to go, you're actually done with the main part of the survey. That was the core part of the survey. Uh, when the mayor said that expect to take a additional time, what he meant was if you go on to this next part where you can actually look at each outcome area that you would like to in more detail. So if you say yes, I would like to continue, you'll see that each outcome area is listed along with the time estimate. In other words, we don't expect people to really spend the uh, 80 to 90 minutes or whatever it would take to read through all of these and uh, Actually, it's probably more like two and a half hours <laughs> to read through all of these. But maybe I'm concerned, especially with safety and security. So I check safety and security. And before you click continue, I'd, I want to verify this. Uh, Rick, could you click on the goal so I can make sure I know what goals, the little red box, I can make sure those are the goals. Yeah, those are the goals I want to give feedback on. So I've been reminded of those. I'm going to go forward. And note that there's also a downloadable information. Uh, if people aren't really sure what we're talking about with those goals, they could download it all, look through it before they make their choices. And so what our trade-off has been is trying to, in some respects, mirror what city officials have to go through as they're considering this. On the other hand, how much time can we reasonably expect a member of the public to, to go ahead and, and uh, contribute information? So the first part is really very high level policy impressions, perspectives, down to I really care about the nitty gritty in an area or two, or I care about everything, and I will take those hours and hours to think through what the, uh, the, the indicators are, the performance outcomes, and, and really delve into it. So it allows the whole range of community interests to be represented. And actually, I, I want to applaud both the city and Lisa and her colleagues at the center. This is a lot of back-end activity to get this to work right. So it uh, doesn't come easily, as you might imagine, to do that. We captured four computer science students and put them in a basement, <laughs> led by a uh, graduate student in economics from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. It was actually, it was just uh, pretty much the graduate student and a couple of others and you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as I look at these, I believe six goals associated with uh, safety and security, 
Uh, Rick has already opened up some additional information about flood hazards. What we've done is we've taken the um, the information on the taking charge page that you were shown at the very beginning where uh, Rick was showing you guys graphs of like a certain indicator. That one page that you were looking at was one indicator. Um, thinking that you guys might want something a little shorter, we tried to shorten things and say, okay, here are the indicators for flood hazards. There's a couple of them and the city's meeting both of them. Or here are the indicators for maintaining a low crime rate. The city is actually meeting all five of its indicators with that. So we basically just tried to distill down to the basics. You can still go back to the taking charge page and look through the graphs and so on. But what these are are short summaries of how's it doing overall with this indicator. Then you can indicate whether you think um, it should be doing more to meet indicators, perhaps that it's not meeting, or whether you think, you know, I know it's not meeting this indicator, but I still think you should keep it about the same because you know, maybe that indicator is not that important to you. Or maybe they're meeting their indicators, but you think, in my neighborhood, it's not met good enough. <laughs> I don't care if you're meeting them. I still wish you would put more resources towards that. So all of those responses are, you can reflect all of those responses by dragging the slider. And at, again, at the bottom of the page as well, you have room to explain anything that you feel passionately or strongly about. Then, if that went faster than you thought and you would like to choose additional areas, you're given one last chance. Uh, I don't want to, so no thanks. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I've had enough with safety and security. And this is the page, uh, and again, there's a number of ways that if you would like to come to a face-to-face -face community conversation to talk about it, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can fill out this form. You can click on the little link to send uh, Ryan, our esteemed uh, graduate student coordinator powerhouse behind this. He, he'll take your name and contact information. Or as the mayor said, you can just contact City Hall directly and say, I'd really like to be invited to that conversation when it happens. Um, the reason for this page where we give you a choice if you want to see the overall outcome area prioritization sliders or not is that if some people did get down into the weeds on safety and security and had changed their minds, like I had said, leave it the same at zero or decrease it, this just gives you an additional chance to say, hey, I'd like to go back now and increase that now that I've seen all these indicators. I don't really want to, uh, to change mine. Um, and finally, this is the third part of this uh, survey, which is our kind of additional stuff page. If you uh, have an interest in the in, uh, city's energy efficiency programs, if you want to give overall feedback on I'm really happy or unhappy with the city in general, separate from the indicators, you can do the second checkbox. And if you want to give uh, feedback on how to improve the survey or what you thought about the survey in general, you can do that as well. We just have made it a little more uh, menu-like this time around because the survey is asking so much of people. I think for anybody who's engaged in strategic planning, one knows how arduous it can be. And I think this is a survey representation of trying to do strategic planning and instead of, uh, I shouldn't say simply because I think budget prioritization is extremely difficult, but it does take a, do I want to, to restrict the hours of the swimming pools or do I not? Or if I'm trying to balance the budget with these five areas, do I like X uh, service or program or Y service or program? This is more that kind of conceptual uh, input that is used traditionally in business and organizational and governmental strategic planning. So again, kind of new for us and very interesting. We really appreciate uh, working with you and, and uh, having this opportunity. Thank you both. Uh, why don't you stay up here and uh, see if they have any questions for us. Uh, before that, I do, before I forget, I do want to say thank you to you all. Uh, I know this can be a little bit dry, but we really appreciate your getting information out to the public about their ability to do this. Uh, because this is really one of the very most important connections that citizens can make to government in a timely manner and in an effective manner. Uh, and so we appreciate your taking the time to convey to them uh, their opportunity uh, to be involved here in a very real way. Questions? Yeah. Has past surveys um, that the city has conducted, has it ever changed policy uh, for city government? 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's affected our snow removal. Uh, it's affected the way we handle police operations. It's affected a large number of things. Can you give me a little bit more detail? Like, did, so the community said um, we need to, we need better snow removal because. Um, we had a bad yeah, bad like we asked one year with respect to uh, what level of snow uh, you thought was appropriate in your neighborhood, relating to your neighborhood streets before the city uh, started plowing snow in the neighborhood streets. And I, if I'm remembering right, it was four inches was, was the standard that we had set. But a lot of people expressed... Uh, uh, that they would like to reconsider that standard. And we went through a long process. And I think in the end, did we, we, we verified that particular standard, did we not? Yeah. I'm, I'm remembering one that's three or four years ago now. So. I think the most recent example was non injured accident tickets, which got complicated by the state, but that's, that's the one that comes to mind most immediately. Yeah. Um, just some nuts and bolts questions. The conversation meeting date, do we have a date for that? I don't think we've set that date yet. And the timeline for the survey, um, would people need to complete it by? We're about a month, but we leave it a little open-ended to allow um, for latecomers to the party. So. so it's okay if I said like end of August? I, I think that's fair. Okay. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and say end of August? That needs to be completed by. And um, overall survey, how many minutes would you, I know the primary takes about 10 to 15, but overall survey? To do every single thing? Yeah. I mean, think about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, mm -hmm. although it could, it could be longer. It's, it's really hard to say. You have so many choices about what you get to do and what you don't have to do. Okay. But that, if you took every single piece, you could, you could easily spend an hour and a half on it. An option for people who don't have internet? Uh, there's going to be an insert in a week from Saturday, oh, this Saturday, this Saturday, in the Lincoln Journal Star and production. Okay. Once we had to talk with that man. Um, you all have a copy in your packet, and this is basically a black and white copy of the insert that will be inside the neighborhood extra, and it has budget exercises that people can do that are, if not identical, very similar to what they can do in the online survey. Okay. Good questions. Yeah. Are there any sort of goals in terms of numbers? I mean, in past years, have you guys kept track of how many people did participate and take the survey? I, I can take that one. Yeah. As many as possible is, <laughs> um, is the answer. Depending upon the year and what was happening with the budget obviously had a lot of impact. But one year we had 2,700 people answer the survey. Um, other years we typically get right around 1,000. I think for something this complex, getting a thousand people to do it would be would be wonderful. Is it every year that you guys do these surveys too? Yes, they're they're very different though. Um, in the main budget year, they tend to focus more on specific programs that might be in jeopardy of being cut from the budget. Is the is this going to be on your main little plan? Yes, it'll be in the hot box okay. and on the main page of Lincoln.ne.gov. Am I taking this one? 40, 40,000. It's like three tenths of 1% of our budget. Okay, can I just add that that's not the survey cost. That's the cost for all the public engagement activities that the University of Public Policy Center and the city do together. So the upcoming community conversation and there's probably going to be another public engagement as well as the survey costs the $40,000. So it's an entire package. It isn't just the survey. was changed by previous surveys, it would be helpful for me. Okay. Why don't you want me to just send the, or, or do you know well, a couple well, of yeah, I, well, I, yeah. Okay. Um, well, this one got changed by the state legislature. I'll, I need you to keep that in mind. This is what happened in last year's budget. Two years running, people told us that providing support to non-injury accident tickets um, was not an important thing to fund. Um, for instance, you have an accident on private property, the police go out and they do a report um, for your convenience to insurance companies. Well, that's not a service we have to provide. And asking the public, uh, two years running, they told us that was the least important service of the ones we mentioned. And so in the budget for 2012-14, 
we cut that. Um, the city council ultimately chose, actually it was 2011, 2012, excuse me, but the city council chose to go ahead and charge a fee for it instead. So that was an example of how the public input changed the direction of policy. So we started charging a fee for that service um, rather than continuing to provide it for free to the public as a result of the input we got from that survey. Did that make sense to you all? We repeat the name of that service one more time. The non-injury accident reporting. Thank you. The police were doing it. The police were doing it. The legislature has changed some rules on it. I don't want to bore you with all the details, but that was the, the, inner, the, uh, the city end of it and how it was impacted by the survey. And the fee was the fee to get the report. Correct. $15 was charged to, to obtain the report. Did anything change in snow removal because of the um, information you got back from citizens or you just uh, there were, um, We didn't change the standard, but it became clear that we weren't communicating that standard as well to the community. Um, so Public Works did try to do some more public um, interaction to try to get people to understand when we were coming into the neighborhoods at, at what point. And you come in when there's four in, at least four inches of snow? Yes. They were presented with information about how much it would cost to go into neighborhoods at two inches, for instance. And they, I mean, it was a lot of money. So they knew what the cost was of, of going in sooner and also what the cost savings were of going in after maybe six inches. And the year that you had the, mo the highest participation where there's some budget controversies that people were wanting to weigh in on, do you remember? I know what it was. Go ahead. I, it was the 10-11 budget, effect. and as, as you recall, we had a, a deficit or projected deficit of uh, close to $9 million. Uh, and if you looked at our program prioritization list, um, the cuts would have been overwhelming. We would have had four central parks open. Uh, we would have reduced library service dramatically. It would have threatened police and firefighters. Uh, to, to make up that gap, we really did need citizen input to decide what to do. And as you may recall, ultimately, um, we restored most of those cuts and put some new revenues in. I know that this one seems to be much more esoteric, but um, you, the city is looking at the relocation of fire stations. So if people are particularly interested in that issue, is there a section that they should make sure they fill out? And are there any other big issues like this out there that you're looking to get information about? Which section has the safety fire? and security section uh, outcome and the timely and effective incident management goal? Um, so if you if you click in that second part of the survey on safety and security outcome, you will get the information on our emergency response, and that leads to why we need station relocation or or whether you feel we need station relocation. And that page is in your packet. Okay. Yeah, here Alan, I'll let you here. Um, as a survey matter, if uh, any resident has a particular uh, piece of uh, information or perspective that they want to offer the city, they can type that in on the text box in the first page and that will be communicated to the city. So if someone really cared about firehouses and they wanted a new firehouse say, in, in some area of the community, and they said, but I really don't, I don't want to, I don't know where to go and I don't want to do all this. How can I make sure that the city knows of my interest? You just put it there and whether it's about that, whether it's about uh, trails, whatever, it is, snow removal, anything. So any resident wouldn't have to really uh, go to that spot and feel like they have to contribute to the uh, looking at all the indicators, looking at all the strategic planning information, if they have messages that they want to make sure City Hall sees. So we tried to make it easy. Isn't there a, an input box on every page? So even if you get through a couple, you say, I'm going to try this, and you say, okay, but I haven't seen anything about parks. I don't want to figure out where parks are. I just want to make the uh, people know that I really love the band or I want the holiday uh, parade to come back. I saw uh, a column by Don Walton about that. Mm -hmm. So if, but if people, tell them where to write it in. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if they want to say, you know, this is my interest, they can do that. So we've tried to make it very, very uh, 
user friendly on people's ability to communicate what they want to us. But if they really want to uh, help the city and think through those indicators and those trade offs and various things, they also have that opportunity. I think it's important to keep in mind that we are in our actions are informed not only by the changes that people indicate they would like to see, but the fact but also by the fact that a majority of the people may indicate they do not want to see a change. And so counting the number of changes that are made doesn't give you the total picture with respect to how much we're informed. In fact, if you make the assumption that government has had some meaningful relationship to, uh, to what people want historically, uh, much of the good things that derive from this sort of a survey will be by way of affirmation uh, with respect to what the city is already doing. Do most or all cities the size of Lincoln do these comprehensive? Pardon me? Do most or all um, cities the size of Lincoln do this type of comprehensive community progressive survey? Not, you know, we're in the foreground uh, of all this kind of effort to have meaningful performance indicators and relate them to city action. And uh, that's one of the reasons, for example, that you see us experimenting with different forms and ways of doing things over these last six years, uh, because uh, we're not only relying upon this, but we are uh, part of the uh, evolving sophistication with regard to these kinds of endeavors. And so uh, we are, uh, to some extent, it's, it's an experiment here as well. I just want to amplify on the mayor's um, comments that sometimes this just means that we validate the status quo. The survey that I mentioned in 2010-11, where I mentioned that we had a number of potential cuts we had to make, we put that on the survey, and citizens overwhelmingly told us they did not want those items cut, which led to the introduction of that budget. So that alone is an example of how we kept things in place the way they were, because citizens told us they'd rather have that than some other alternative. Okay, good to go? Mm -hmm. Thank you, again. Lisa, thank you.